Follow the science. That's what we're told, and for the most part, I think that's a great idea. But what if scientists are coming to the wrong conclusions because of bias? And what happens when scientists actually commit fraud? Let's get into it. Before we do, I'm Samir, I'm a health coach and a PhD student. Special announcement today that a number of health experts have come together and are offering an amazing deal. So you can get over $2,000 worth of content for only $49. The link is below in the description. Okay, so in the past couple of weeks, a couple of articles have come out that paint a very disturbing picture. Uh, the first basically indicates that everything we thought we knew about depression is wrong, right? So the prevailing theory of depression is that it has something to do with a chemical imbalance. Um, we're told that there's a lack of serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is um, hormone, sometimes called the happiness hormone, or it's a pleasure hormone. So it's a very powerful hormone. Sometimes mice have been seen to, if they can push a button to just get dopamine or serotonin, they just keep on pushing that button. They won't even eat and they'll starve themselves. Uh, so this is a very powerful hormone, and it was thought that it's a lack of this serotonin that's what's causing depression. So what this paper did was it looked at pretty much all of the existing evidence to see if there really is an association between lower serotonin levels and higher rates of depression. So again, if, you, if, it, if this is correct, if the conventional wisdom is correct, you would see in depressed populations, you would see that the serotonin levels are actually less than in normal populations, right? But what we see when we look at the ev evidence is that there isn't a correlation at all, right? So remember, the assumption is causation, but we can't even find correlation. So it's definitely not causation. Um, something else is going on here. By the way, this doesn't mean that SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Zoloft or Prozac or those classes of drugs. So it doesn't mean that those don't work. It just means that they probably work through some other pathway. Um, and of course, if you are on an SSRI, please don't go off it suddenly. Don't make any changes to your antidepressant treatment without consulting your doctor. Uh, but this is big news. It means that our fundamental understanding about a disease, an understanding that's been accepted as fact, is just plain wrong. Now, I'm no expert on this, but what I see in my own clients when we improve uh, gut health, when we reduce inflammation, when we increase uh, the saturated fat intake in the diet, when we improve overall metabolic health, the depression symptoms seem to dramatically reduce. In fact, this is one of the first comments I got from a client. She said, look, you weren't treating me for my mental health, uh, but following this program, my mental health has greatly improved, right? Um, and then that brings us to the next study I wanna talk about. Now, this one actually crosses a line, um, and the line that it crosses is called the fraud line, right? So for a long time, Alzheimer's, which is the most common form of dementia, has, so, you know, if you have dementia, you, you, they're tests to you know, see if you have dementia. But if you have dementia plus uh, you have beta, what's called beta amyloid plaques in the brain, then you're classified as having Alzheimer's, right? So beta amyloid is a substance that all of our brains secrete every night, um, and then it gets cleaned up in the morning. In Alzheimer's patients, the clearance, the beta amyloid clearance is not happening, and the result is that the sticky substance builds up, uh, and it's called, like I said, beta amyloid plaque. Now, until a few years ago, it was thought that the plaques might be what's causing the dementia in Alzheimer's patients, and some people still believe that, right? Uh, but the problem, and, and why I personally never, or I haven't believed it for a long time, is that every single class of drug that's removed the beta amyloid plaques either did nothing or it seemed to make the problem worse. So it may well be the case that those beta amyloid plaques are actually protective. In other words, the brain's doing something good by leaving those plaques in place. Otherwise, the Alzheimer's symptoms might be worse. The dementia symptoms might be worse, right? But that's what I think many people thought even uh, a couple years ago. But it's clearly not the position of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, who last year approved a very expensive drug. Apparently, it raised the cost of Medicare overall that targets uh, beta amyloid plaques. The finding was, uh, the approval was so controversial that three of the people who were on the panel that approved it resigned in protest. Their position was that there was nowhere near enough evidence that the drug did any good to approve it, right? So uh, what's changed just in the last couple of weeks with this new study is that we now have evidence that the findings that originally showed a link or a causational link between Alzheimer's and beta amyloid plaques appears to have been fraudulent. It looks like the scientists involved may have actually doctored brain scans in order to provide evidence for their claims. Now, why would anyone do that, right? I mean, it sounds crazy. You're going to actually alter digital images. Remember, this is almost 20 years ago, right? So they didn't even have, like, if our Photoshop existed, but it wasn't what it is today, right? 
So you went in and you made changes that now, looking back, people can tell it was clearly tampered, tampered with, right? It, it seems totally crazy. But just remember that there are millions of dollars worth of research grants at stake for these scientists. And they know that if they have a hypothesis that they're able to get funding for, they spend years testing it in the lab, and their hypothesis turns out to be wrong, or at least not supported by the evidence, they're unlikely to continue to get funding. So that realization can then induce panic and lead to poor judgment, uh, in this case, going on to commit fraud, right? Uh, on a less criminal level, so this is kind of an extreme example, but on the daily level, this is something that is happening to all scientists and in fact, to all of us at all the time, at all times, right? So you have a hypothesis, a good scientist, so this is like the cream of the crop scientists, and I've met very few people like this, they will be the most skeptical of their own hypothesis, and they will always assume that they're wrong, right? But like I say, and, and then they'll look for ways in which they could be wrong, they'll imagine ways in which they could be wrong, they'll test their hypothesis from this level, from this level, trying to disprove it, right? Um, those are the rare scientists, right? Most scientists are seeking to confirm their own bias. And in fact, most of us, to be fair to scientists, most of us are going out in the world trying to confirm our own biases. <laughs> You're not trying to question them, right? It's unfortunate truth. As such, you know, if you think that Alzheimer's plaques call, or beta amyloid plaques cause Alzheimer's, or if you think whatever it is, cholesterol causes heart disease, or you think um, whatever it is, meat causes cancer or whatever, you look at the data, you'll be able to find enough tenuous associations or you'll be able to cut the data in such a way that it seems to support your hypothesis. And I think the decades of misguided depression research and Alzheimer's research are just one such example, but as I say, there are many such examples. Um, I'd love to hear about any examples you can think of in the comments down below. With that, I'm Samir, I'm a health coach and PhD student. Please do check out the amazing autoimmune breakthrough super stack offer. Uh, it's including Dr. Will Cole and Maria Emmerlich, who some many of you know from the keto world. Uh, I'm Samir, I'm a health coach and PhD student. I'll see you next time.